If you are suffering from alopecia areata, you're probably aware that there is still no FDA-approved treatment. Well, that could very well soon be changing with baricitinib. Stay tuned to learn all about it. Hey guys, Leon here from HairGod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Guys, if you're personally worried about your own hair loss, then do make sure to click the link in the description to take the Hair God Hair Loss Quiz. All you've got to do is answer a few short and simple questions about yourself and your hair loss. Then you'll receive free, personalized, expert information on how to regrow healthy hair. So, alopecia areata is an autoimmune condition where hair is lost by the immune system attacking the hair follicles. It's a pretty common condition, affecting an estimated 4.5 million people in the United States. Interestingly, two-thirds of patients are under the age of 30, and it affects men and women equally. Now, there are various forms of alopecia areata, but the most common one is the classical patchy form. In this form, there's almost complete hair loss in one or more well-defined patches of the scalp. Unlike pattern baldness, these patches can appear literally anywhere, and that can include the back and the sides of the scalp, which are immune to pattern baldness. There is currently no cure for alopecia areata, and there's actually no FDA-approved medication at all. The condition often resolves on its own, so many doctors will advise patients to just wait it out, and maybe they'll wear a wig until the hair regrows. If there's no spontaneous remission, there are some off-label treatment doctors can try. Off-label means that the drug is approved for use with other diseases, but the doctor at their own discretion can use it for alopecia areata. Currently, the most common off-label treatments are topical injections of an immunosuppressant. These stop the immune system from attacking the hair follicles and can lead to regrowth, at least temporarily. The other common off-label treatment involves topical steroid creams. These are normally used in various skin conditions like rashes and eczemas. Both these treatments do come with side effects like skin atrophy, depigmentation, and folliculitis, where the hair follicles can become inflamed. In some cases, systemic oral steroids can be used. But as I said, that these are all off-label treatments, and they can be very hit and miss. Some people respond to various degrees, others don't respond at all. And when treatment stops, a large proportion of responders relapse. So, baricitinib is a drug that's already on the market, sold under the brand name Orumayant. It's approved in the US and European Union for the treatment of arthritis. This is another autoimmune condition that affects the joints with severe pain and swelling. Baricitinib belongs to a class of drugs called JAK inhibitors. JAKs are a family of proteins that include JAK1, JAK2, JAK3, and TYK2. These JAK proteins interact with a class of receptors called cytokine receptors. As the name suggests, cytokine receptors are binded to and activated by molecules called cytokines. When the cytokine binds to the chitokine, receptor on the external surface of the cell membrane, this activates the JAK signaling system, which is on the other side of the cell membrane. The JAK system then sends the cytokine signal to the cell nucleus, which regulates the expression of various genes. By inhibiting the JAK protein, the JAK inhibitor basically kills the signal before it reaches the cell nucleus, so it essentially neutralizes the action of the cytokines. Now remember how I mentioned earlier that in alopecia areata, the body's own immune system attacks the hair follicles, well, the immune cells doing the attack are the so-called T-cells. These infiltrate and inflame the hair follicle bulb, leading to the hair loss. And T-cell-related autoimmunity is strongly linked to the action of cytokines, not just in alopecia areata, but in other autoimmune conditions. So the JAK inhibitors are being used and researched for a variety of autoimmune conditions outside of alopecia and arthritis. For example, Crohn's disease, vitiligo, psoriasis, and others. So, baricitinib received the status of breakthrough therapy from the FDA this past March on the back of encouraging phase 2 results. The breakthrough therapy designation is one of four FDA expedited programs, and it's meant to speed up the development of drugs for serious or life-threatening conditions. To get this designation, the FDA needs to have seen substantial preliminary evidence that the drug is superior to existing therapies. And this evidence needs to be clinical with real patients, not just in petri dishes or lab animals. And baricitinib getting this designation means that the FDA is now investing more of its attention and resources to eventually getting it approved. Assuming, of course, the phase 3 results live up to expectations. So things are looking pretty good for baricitinib, and at this point, 
will give it well over 50% of a chance that the drug will be approved. Eli Lilly, the manufacturer, is currently investigating baricitinib in two phase 3 trials. These are so-called Brave AA1 and Brave AA2. The phase 2 portion of the Brave AA1 study is the one that led to the breakthrough designation and the Brave AA2 is in a separate phase 3 trial. They are both currently being scheduled to be completed in March 2022. Realistically, and allowing for delays that are so typical of large phase 3 trials, you can expect baricitinib to get FDA approval sometime in 2023. Again, if the phase 3 results live up to expectations. The two doses Eli Lilly are studying are 2 and 4 mg daily. As I mentioned, either baricitinib is already on the market for the treatment of arthritis at 2 mg daily. Now, to the best of our knowledge, Eli Lilly haven't released any actual efficacy results from their phase 2 research. But there is already some published research on off-label treatment of alopecia areata with other JAK inhibitors, notably tofacitinib and ruxolitinib. Most of these are case studies, and the rest have a small number of participants. It seems that a majority of patients have some response, and some of these have complete regrowth. A large minority are completely unresponsive to treatment with these kinds of drugs. With regards to baricitinib specifically, there is only a case report of a 17-year-old man who had a dramatic reversal of his hair loss whilst taking baricitinib. Now, while we don't know yet how effective baricitinib will be in treating alopecia areata, we do have a clear idea of its side effects. At this point, there are numerous studies with arthritis patients, and the drug has already been taken by tens of thousands of people. Overall, it does have a pretty decent safety profile. The most common side effects are upper respiratory tract infections like colds, nausea, cold sores, and herpes. One of the most serious and thankfully rare side effects is the formation of blood clots in some patients. So with this latest news, we can imagine that there will be quite a few doctors out there prescribing this drug off-label before the phase 3 trials come out. But guys, there is one problem for those interested in giving all your mind to try. It's very expensive. The list price for a 30-day supply is over $2,000, 2265 to be precise. And it's unlikely your insurer will actually cover this cost for off-label use. So if you're interested in trying this before it gets proper marketing authorization, then expect a big cost. At this point, there is plenty of peer-reviewed scientific research showing that there are natural treatments for alopecia areata. Treatments that the research suggests are A, effective, B, completely safe, and C, cost next to nothing. You can check one of the videos on the screen right now to find out more.